Hey guys, this is Anand Shippy from Anantech.com. We have Intel's next unit of computing, the NUC, or the model number on this particular box is the DC3217BY, so we'll stick with NUC. Uh, I don't usually do unboxing videos, but this one's kind of neat in that when you open it, you get the Intel theme. There's actually a uh, photo sensor in here that when you cover it up, and then exposed to light, it triggers that. Now inside the box itself, Pretty simple. We have the Nook. Um, we covered this at IDF, but it's a four by four uh, form factor, four inches by four inches. Um, got single USB up front, two on the back, HDMI, Thunderbolt, Kensington lock, and DC power input as well. Um, and here's the power adapter. Uh, also in the box, you've got uh, just kind of a, a mounting bracket um, in case you want to, I guess, mount it on a, the back of a monitor. Now. This will ship for about $399 without any storage or Wi-Fi. It will come with the processor. It's a, a Core i3 in here. So Intel sent along the uh, MSATA version of Intel's SSD 520. This is a Sandforce-based MSATA SSD. Uh, Sandforce is particularly useful in these small form factors because they don't require an external DRAM. Also got the Centrino Wireless 6235. So this is a dual antenna 802.11n solution from Intel, and it'll fit into a uh, half-height mini PCIe slot, which uh, we'll find inside in a second here. There are a bunch of screws on the bottom here, um, four main ones underneath what look like where feet would go. It's just standard Phillips screws. Four loosened. Now we've got to loosen this one a little more. Take the back plate off, and then that reveals the nook itself. Um, so here you've got the uh, two slots, um, mini PCIe, as well as the M SATA slot, two SO DIMM slots for memory, um, and then I'm assuming underneath all this we'll find. The CPU and stuff. So the four screws that hold the motherboard in place with it out, we'll look at the motherboard in a second here, um, you see the two antennas that are actually routed here, one over here, one over here, um, and this top is plastic giving it RF transparency. Uh, and that's kind of the bulk of the, the bottom of the chassis. Uh, this little cutout here is actually for the heatsink and fan unit on the machine itself. So it's not passively cooled, I mean this is still a, a dual core IV bridge. Um, but underneath here is where you find the CPU. Got battery for CMOS. I'm assuming this is maybe a reset for the CMOS battery itself. Uh, but the back of the PCB is pretty simple. Um, here's a better look at the, the front of the PCB. So two screws hold the fan in place. And you take that off, you see the uh, kind of rest of the heatsink structure here. Uh, there's one screw here, two more here that we're going to pull out and then hopefully take the heatsink off. All right, so there is the heatsink. See there's a heat pad up top for the chipset and then a little bit of thermal paste on the bottom for the CPU itself. And here's a look at the bare chips. So you've got the CPU on the bottom, chipset up north. Uh, now eventually with Haswell that'll go down to a single chip which will uh, help save a little bit on PCB real estate. But there you have it, there's the Nook. There's the, uh, it's a full-blown computer right there. And it should be pretty powerful. Like this is, uh, you know, you go back seven or eight years and you're looking at something that's much, much faster than, than you know, kind of a, a high-end desktop, at least in CPU performance, than what you'd be able to get back then.